Pokemon Unite tier list, Dragonite update. So we had something rare happen. We received a new Pokemon and balance in the most recent update. The weird thing is, this doesn't seem to have affected the tier list at all since last week. Go figure. Now the only thing I can maybe think of is that we have the reintroduction of the B plus tier, because Venusaur kinda always been there, but it doesn't really like justify having an entire tier for just one Pokemon, and the Pikachu buffs seem significant, but the thing is, I'm going to be biased against Pikachu pretty much the entire time I play Pokemon Unite until this Pokemon gets some major buffs, because I played the Japanese beta. I know what S-tier Pikachu is capable of. Maybe with, like, modern Pokemon Unite understanding it's closer to A-plus tier or something, because, like, people are better at farming and not getting hard bullied out. But Pikachu is just a shadow of its former self. And even with the Thundershock buff, that's going to help it farm. That might get it, like, a half a level ahead by not losing out on too much farm or getting a bit more lane bullying pressure throughout the game. And the Unite changes might actually be massive to Unite once more safely throughout some time in the game, or maybe twice. So, like, there could be some very big snowballing effects, but I'm used to Pikachu as, like, the Giga Lane Bully. Like, used to be one of the best laners in the game, and now just kind of, like, it can chill there and help out. But what it did in Japanese beta was unacceptable. So, like, B plus tier. Maybe a pretty strong pick, but it seems like the devs just kind of hate casters at this point, so I don't know. And then the Venusaur changes. I think Venusaur's been overrated for a long time. Like I said, pretty much always B plus. Um... Nerfing Petal Dance makes it weak, but buffing Solar Beam Sludge Bomb, Venusaur was already kind of going in that direction over the last month or so. So, yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at. Uh, Sarina got buffed. I can't explain it. Uh, maybe we just need to go back to the double S, triple plus tier like we saw with Sylveon. I consider Sarina to be stronger than launch Sylveon and only weaker than launch Gengar. But here we are, like... They, they buffed it. You Like, the amount of effective health that Serena receives in stats and then extra damage is off, like is way more than the amount of healing lost from the triple axle. Like, I think on your third triple axle usage, you're finally, like, health negative, but at that point you've done so much more damage, you're just winning the fight anyways. So, Serena's still the best Pokemon in the game. It needed to get, like, gutted into A tier because it's completely unhealthy to have a bruiser Pokemon that has a speed boost, a dash, a shield a heal, CC reduction, and then whatever other nonsense it has. So, like, Serena's just the best Pokemon in the game. Let's talk about our boy Dragonite. Dragonite, not S tier. I'm gonna say comfortably A plus tier. I thought it was going to be, like, the Garchomp, like, old Garchomp, pre-nerf Garchomp, before it got, like, the level 9 changes and ended up becoming awful. Well, not awful, like, Garchomp's still, like, A tier, A plus tier when played at, like, the perfect level in the perfect way. But, like, Garchomp's just... Yeah, it, it, I don't know, like, did Garchomp get nerfed down to A tier? In Like, is that, like, what, we're, what the takeaway is from all this? It almost feels like that. It could just be the disparity between Garchomp being S before the Winter Update and just kind of whatever now, but it can still carry. It's just, like, not the best carry. And, like, trying to compare Dragonite to that, they do different things. Garchomp has, like, the absurd Giga Sustain and Fight. If three people pile onto, like, a full-stack Garchomp that's just, like, popping off, Garchomp can, like, heal through and just tank all that and eventually take over. Dragonite is more of a duelist. It can take on one or two people, but the second, like, three or more get in there, it can't team fight as well as Garchomp. So, it does different things. But, like, Dragonite just beats up on people way harder than Garchomp can in, like, the 1v1. It's kind of nuts. Uh, but the no sustain means it is, like, a lot more vulnerable. And that's why I'm like, how does Sarina exist? How do the devs find Sarina to be okay to where they tune it? They give it a buff and a nerf at the same time. And then they make Dragonite not have, like, any... No shield, no sustain, when Serena gets all that and more. And I, pretty much more damage, like, when you just pop off on the Queenly Majesty. Still still completely lost. But yeah, the reason why it's A+, is because you can shut it down with crowd control. Uh, the Unite move is really good, but it's not a team fight Unite move. If a team fight breaks out and Dragonite's in the middle of it, you don't have a Unite move. You don't get to add a buddy barrier to the team fight. You don't get to get some kind of, like, crazy effect or super overtuned move, like Gardevoir Unite move or um, Mr. Mime Unite move. But even then, like, a Greninja uniting into a fight is going to do something, whereas Dragonite just does not have a Unite move once the fight breaks out. So it needs to engage... But at that point, it can kind of be inconsistent, but it's still like a really good Unite move. Like, you just jump to an objective, or steal it, or secure it, or, like, do some cross-map weirdness. So, 
it is it is good. It just it's, you don't have that impact. You can't bring a buddy bear into the fight when buddy bear is the best item in the game and pretty much defining the entire late game meta right now. But at the same time, it can just outduel you. You stack the dragon dances, you get outraging, you punch two people down, and then you just you do kind of filthy things. But it's hard to put in scale when S tier Garchomp used to exist, Serena is in its current state, and Talonflame exists. Talonflame still S tier. Like, how did they not nerf Talonflame? They reduced the speed on Venusaur, and then they don't add any cooldown back into Fly on Talonflame, who has the most unhealthy play pattern in all of Pokemon Unite. You fly in, do half of like a team's health, you flame charge out for free, and then like three seconds later you fly back in. Now, the fly speed nerf did bring Talonflame down a bit, but it's still, again, just a completely unhealthy play pattern that has like no counterplay. It can still see steal Rotom, Dreadnought, Zapdos super easily. It's it's just not good. Like they need it like all those changes where they like they buffed Talonflame by like increasing the speed of fly. I think they bug fixed Gale Wings. They gave it attack, so they made it just stronger on everything it chooses. And then also they increased the like the or they reduced the cooldown on fly or something. So they just like over giga nerfed it, haven't reverted it, and Talonflame's just S tier because of that. And now the game like none of the decisions in the game make sense to me anymore because they nerf Lucario. Car is like A plus tier now. Uh, there's people like OG was taken that make it S tier, but OG is just one of the best players in the game. Um, like, they nerf Lucario, and they nerf Lucario again, but they're not nerfing the right things. The quick attack, power punch needs to be nerfed, or else, like, Lucario is just unhealthy in lane and gets to do, like, all kinds of weird stuff. And then they keep Talonflame where it is. They nerf Zeraora, and then they keep Talonflame where it is. Now, I don't know if Zeraora got nerfed out of S tier just yet, because, again, there's, like, too many strong Pokemon. Like, if Serena gets gutted, like, just say, like, let's say just loses everything, just becomes a good Pokemon. Borderline unplayable. Maybe they just make it the worst Pokemon in the game, because that's what it deserves. But, as it stands right now, like, let's just say they, they do what they did, I don't know, to, like, Gengar or something. Goes from S tier to A tier. Um, now, by proxy, all the old speedsters feel good again, so Serena going down might put Lucario back... I don't know, like, yeah, Lucario can still, like, extreme speed just take over a fight. Problem is, there's no reason to pick Lucario in any game now, because Serena's so busted and just does everything better. Serena gets a million resets on more damage shielding and, heal shielding and healing than Lucario does just ever. And then Lucario got a steadfast nerf twice in a row. So, yeah. But I'm like, is, is uh, Zeraora a plus tier waiting for Serena to get nerfed so it can go back to S? Or, what? But yeah, like... Volt Switch was always a troll, you should never be picking it. Like, Volt Switch puts, like, Zeraora immediately into, like, B tier or something. But Spark got gutted. It loses 180% attack scaling. That's several hundred damage in a team fight. That's almost a thousand damage on, like, a single target over the course of, like, multiple uses of Spark. So, I... I don't know. Like, is that enough to kill Zeraora? Maybe, but at the same time, the burst is still nuts and Wild Charge still does damage. And maybe the Wild Charge bug fixes make it a bit more consistent. And the Spark did get, like, animation canceling shenanigans, which made it better in the patch in the winter update. I think that was also a bug fix or something. A lot of broken things in the game, a lot of weird outcomes that we can't really figure out. But as it stands right now, Serena's the best Pokemon. Talonflame is just unhealthy gameplay. And Zeraora, maybe still S tier. Maybe just A plus tier by proxy. I don't even know anymore. Uh, Cinderace got buffed. Cinderace was already S tier and got buffed. Cinderace is the best AD carry in the game. Like, Greninja, no, just doesn't have it. I, I like that people are going back to smokescreen surf Greninja though, or they're just like surf over Water Shuriken. So Water Shuriken nerf was good, again, because like it's just unhealthy where Water Shuriken is supposed to be skill based, like it's a skill shot, and if you whiff it, that's why it, like it has a lot of power, but then you can also fall flat and you're giving up like DPS and stuff, but having just the clones do tons of damage and then like, uh, hit scan you with it, that, that, that's just not healthy. That, like that, you, you shouldn't need something that unfair to like, cause viability for something so now going back to like smoke screen surf or double team surf like is, is good for greninja so greninja's still doing fine but like cinderace you just can't compete with that and even with the buffs like decidueye needs base stats a lot more damage on the unite move and then a buff to the other thing razor leaf i think razor leaf is the best pick on decidueye because you want to have like the giga late game carry adc dream but Decidueye just ain't there, and that's again why, why I don't understand, like, okay, Sylveon was way too busted on release, so they had to even, like, hotfix it. Decidueye, like, yeah, Greedent was also just kind of a nothing Pokemon. Um, it was annoying, and idiots just keep, kept getting baited by it, but it never, it's never really been that crazy of a Pokemon. Uh, Decidueye came in, 
and was like deliberately under tuned. So it's like, all right, the devs are learning. Now the devs haven't learned, and then they don't nerf it, and then Dragonite's just okay. Well, not just okay, like it's A plus tier, but like when you compare it to these other Pokemon, like Lucario, Zeraora, it's like, okay. So not introducing the best Pokemon in the game anymore, except when they did it for Sorina and Sylveon, and then Decidueye is just the worst of the 80 carries. So really, always pick Cinderace. If your team does not have a Cinderace, it needs a Cinderace. Best Zapdos secure in the game, that's how you win. Also just the best 80 carry in team fights. Greninja is a strong pick as well, but that leaves no reason to play Decidueye when it's the same role. It doesn't do anything that these Pokemon don't already just do better. Like, why why go for Razor Leaf when all Cinderace has to do is, like, Powerball 2 Pokemon, and it's just more damage than Razor Leafing 4 or something? Um, let's see, who else is where? Mamoswine's still S tier. Thank, thank you, devs. Like, the devs have not caught on to Mamoswine being the best tank in the game and being absolutely game-changing, game-winning. You go, like, if you're going Ice Shard, that's why, like, or, not Ice Shard, Ice Fang. Like, people are like, oh, Mamoswine isn't S tier, it's maybe like A tier, you know, there's better tanks in the game. If you're doing that, you're an idiot because you're going Ice Fang, and that's why you're losing games. Ice Fang is the worst pick on Mamoswine. You go Icicle Crash, which makes you stronger. Like, level 5 Icicle Crash, that's second Bs. That's maybe even first Bs, depending on, like, some weird stuff that might go down. So, you're getting more secures, you're getting more steals, you're setting up more ganks, and then you have AoE crowd control. So, I mean, if you're bad, and you don't know how to land skill shots, so you're using Icicle Fang... Icicle Fang, Ice. If you're using Ice Fang, the na names, words. If you're using Ice Fang because you're bad, well, that's because you're bad, but then you're just giving up an S tier potential Pokemon, so that's not good. And you always need to go high horsepower, infinitely more reliable than the Earthquake, a um, lot more smooth as well. So you just go Icicle Crash, high horsepower, hit three people, they're stunned for like three seconds, game's over. And if you hit like a Cinderace, like, and that's also your point. You're supposed to go headhunting. You find their high value squishy carry at Zapdos. You hit them with an ISO crash. You hit them with a high horsepower. You night move while they're stunned. And then you one shot them. You get to one shot carries as the tank and their crowd control the entire time. You also want to get a multi knock up with your night move. You just want to keep people out. If you keep, if you keep a higher priority damage target out of a fight at Zapdos, you take Zapdos and you win the game. So Mammoth Swine is just ridiculous. Also the strongest laner, like for a tank. Ice, uh, if you go tackle into Ice Shard, nothing they can do about it. You steal everything, you secure everything, and then you win fights because you have like four seconds of crowd control or something. It's nasty. So yeah, Mammoth Swine is really, really, really good. Uh, Mr. Mime's still S tier. So I mean, actually, when you look at this, it's kind of beautiful in a way that we have representatives from every class in the S tier. There's just the best support, the best, it's hard to call a Mr. Mom support. Like, you still need healers and stuff on your team. The best support, the best tank, 80 carry, slash ranged attacker, speedster, and then all-rounder. So, I mean, like, cool. That's the state of the game. Should it be that way? God, no. Like, I think that this is unhealthy right now with how everything's messy and then Pokemon are being balanced in very awful and terrible ways. Uh, Snorlax still in a good buff state. Crustal. I don't know, either Crustle dropped off or it didn't, or the game's too, just too weird again. Like, why pick Crustle when just Sarina exists? You can just, like, Grassy Glide scoop two people into a fight instead of X's ring, and then you just win harder because you can fight out that entire team fight. Really, Crustle's just for the pick and a little bit of follow-up damage, and then running away and being unstoppable and, like, uncatchable. So it's, like, super annoying and can get work done, but doesn't win 1v5 like Sarina does, so... Kind of, kind of upsetting right there. Um... Who else goes where? Like, Slowbro buffs don't even seem like they did anything. Like, it loses special attack on Amnesia. I guess because Oblivious is just, like, kicks in stronger now. But that just means you ignore Slowbro. Like, you've always just been able to ignore Slowbro and win games. You've always been able to ignore Greedent and win games. So, that's why, like, they're just not good. Um, uh, yeah, now we can start getting other things. Wigglytuff got nerfed, but... See, the thing is, like, people are like, oh, Wigglytuff's so strong. It isn't. Q-Charm's just weird in a way that I feel like the devs actually don't even know how to program it, so they just kind of make it more annoying than it should be. And then it, you just unite move for buddy barriers. Like, it's really just Wigglytuff with a buddy barrier and then four other buddy barriers, and then you win the game at Zapdos. But Wigglytuff itself, you can exploit it, you can play around it, you can kind of bully it out of lane, and you can and you can just kind of steal things away from it. Um, does really good into melee composition, so maybe that's why, because like, oh yeah, Zeraor tries to dash in, Lucario, all these Pokemon get interrupted, but eventually, like, Wigglytuff just doesn't do anything in a fight. So I don't really have, like, a lot of respect or regard for it. Um, and now and now it just got nerfed. But yeah, once Buddy Bear get nerf gets nerfed, this is D-tier Pokemon. And 
yeah, it just, it just, again, it's a new, it's, I've been saying it's a pub stomper, it's a noob trap. If you just, like, bait yourself into it, and then you line up into a wall to get bounced up five times, you deserve to lose. But, it's easy to counterplay. Until it Unite moves at Zapdos with an entire team. But, I, I think at that point, you could put Wigglytuff and its team behind enough to where hopefully it doesn't matter. Game's weird. There's a lot of other problems. I don't think Wigglytuff is like, is like, oh man, it's busted. No, it's, it's just a symptom of those problems or something. Uh, where are we? Gardevoir. It just got nerfed. But I think, like, Gardevoir is just always A-plus tier, no matter what. Unite move at Zapdos, you win the entire game. You pop off really early with Psyshock. Psyshock didn't get nerfed, only Psyshock plus. It's like your late-game carrying got touched a bit, but you were already, always still, like, a crazy late-game carry. The Moonblast means you have counterplay, because that got nerfed pretty hard. But if that doesn't matter, because, like, you got a team at Zapdos, and then you just Unite move Zapdos and win the game... Then it's not really changing much. So it's like, yeah, Gardevoir doesn't have as much S tier potential, but Gardevoir can like just miss skill shots. Like let's think, you're never going to be able to land everything on Garchomp, and that's why it will never be S tier, but also always kind of be A plus tier because it needs that high skill expression, high skill cap, power into it. So it's always like A A plus tier, and yeah, it got nerfed, but it's still really strong, really good pick. And then like other things around it have been changing, and the game's just weird, and I hate it. Um. Where else we at? Eldegoss? I don't know, like, what if Eldegoss, you actually want to go Cotton Spore, and it's like A-plus tier now, because you just run in and, like, nuke an entire fight, and the knockup is strong enough, and you get, like, two of those in a fight, and then you just hard win the game? And maybe even, like, you just pollen puff yourself, and then you just go in and you become, like, a burst carry that also has, like, strong supportive capabilities or something weird? Like, that could be what happens, or nerfing Leaf Tornado actually hurts Eldegoss a lot, so it doesn't scale, and then it's just not as crazy or something. We'll have to see where it lands. Uh, Blastoise still A tier. Ninetales is still A plus tier. Machamp is A, A plus. I've been seeing more Machamps, but at the same time, like, you, you, I, it's mostly like a Machop cheese comps, where it's like they just run up and they just karate chop all Dinos really quick and they try to scale. But then, like, you're not as crazy as a Garchomp or a Lucario or especially a Serena. Serena goes down, Machamp's back in A plus tier. Serena's still the best Pokemon in the game. No reason to pick Machamp over Serena. That's just the way it is. Absol still sucks. Charizard still sucks. Cramorant's... Like, this is... The, Cramorant is my biggest complaint with the game. Why nerf Cramorant three times and then just allow all this? Like, that is the problem with the game. The mages are not allowed to be good. Pikachu sucks because babies can't handle getting bullied in lane. Cramorant sucks because babies can't handle getting bullied in lane and they stay within Surf Hurricane range. They don't know how to, like, kite or move around. And then melee Pokemon are strong because all you have to do is just get onto Pokemon, like, get onto an enemy with the overloaded kit of a Lucario, Zeraora, or Serena, and just mash the A button, and then you automatically win the game. So these Pokemon are allowed to be ridiculous. These Pokemon, like Pikachu, um, Cramorant, and even, like, little Ninetales starting to drop off. Just are not allowed to be good. Slaveon's still pretty good. Its Unite move coming online at level 8 can, like, kind of determine the game. But it's still, like, one of those things where it's like, why don't we have an S-tier caster in here? That's because when Sylveon was there, it was, like, the most unhealthy thing for the game ever. And when Cramorant was S-tier, it was pretty pretty toxic as well. And Gardevoir was almost S-tier, and that had to get nerfed immediately. And then Ninetales just kind of, like, fell out of the meta. So, I mean, as you can see, there, there is, like, an extreme bias here with how the devs are handling the game. And I personally really don't like it. Uh, Blissey's A-plus tier, Gengar's A-tier. Again, with, like, the, the current state of the jungle ma meta is, like, Talonflame's just better to put in than Gengar. If Talonflame gets nerfed, maybe Gengar becomes a higher priority. Gengar needs a bit more. I don't know what. But after the terror of launch Gengar, Gengar could be, like, B tier for the next three years, and I think it's still fair because of how much Gengar was good on launch. Um, I'm just kind of, like, looking around, where it's, like, here, here's the priority Pokemon. These are your game-winning positions. These are, you should be picking them because they can, like, at, like take over or really determine the outcomes of the games. These are more niche picks, like, hey, I guess if you main them, you're going to be all right. Don't pick these if you want to lose. Don't, or, <laughs> yeah, don't pick these. Don't pick these if you want to win. Really don't pick these if you want to win at all. And then the other two Pokemon just, they don't exist. Just delete them. Even though you paid for them, just delete them. Um, seems about right. And again, I don't like it. I... 
I missed when, like, the thing is, I like the idea of Pokemon Unite, that everything is powerful, and that you always get to, like, live out some kind of crazy Pokemon fantasy of just, like, being the best, and just going ham on, on something. But then when they start playing favorites, like you see with League of Legends, the game gets very unhealthy and very unsatisfying. Like, if Mamoswine was not S-tier, I would have no Pokemon I'd want to play. Even, like, Dragonite, I feel like it exploited a lot. Like, I'm not responsible enough to play Dragonite. I like going in too hard, like old Garchomp, but after they nerf Garchomp, like, what am I supposed to do? After they nerf Cramorant, what am I supposed to do? I'm just not allowed to have fun, but if you're Talonflame main, if you're, if you, I don't know, if, whatever's wrong, like, whatever happened to you in life, I'm sorry, and that's why you're Mr. Mime main, but at least you're getting your reward now in Pokemon Unite, and that's pretty cool. And then, like, Sarina, if, if you just, if you just want to, be a meta slave and abuse things without even caring. Same thing for like uh, Zero Aura. And honestly, like Lucario just stopped being fun for me. I don't know why. It just didn't like fit in with all the other busted things going around. I just felt like I could do more on the game with Garchomp. Could be Team Diff. I don't know. And yeah, maybe like maybe my new fun is just running in with like pure special attack, aggro, Eldegoss on the uh, Cotton Spore. And yeah. Like it, it's weird. The roster feels smaller. Than like it did almost on launch. Where it was like, I wanted to play Snorlax, I wanted to play Crustle, I wanted to play Ninetales, Cramorant, all of these other Pokemon, Lucario, even Greninja on launch. Now I don't want to play anything but Mamoswine and some Dragonite, maybe just keep getting better at Dragonite. So it's not, I don't know, it's, it's looking bad. And that's like kind of its own rant. But hope you guys enjoy the video. That's tier list. Uh. Something, something, something. Only pick these and maybe Eldegoss, but Eldegoss kind of in a weird spot.